There are moments like these when I would like to just offer the invitational hymn, but I would this morning like to say a few truths about the resurrection. Before that, would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, giver of all good gifts, we acknowledge you as King of kings and Lord of lords. May that affirmation not only be reflected in our singing and in our worship here, but also in our living so that other people would have the opportunity to know what we know, that Jesus Christ is alive and well and that he walks with us that we might be alive and well too. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. It was just about 275 years ago when Charles Wesley, the brother of John Wesley, penned the following words. Christ the Lord is risen today. Earth and heaven join together to say, raise your joys, your triumphs high, sing ye heavens and earth reply, alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done. Fought the fight, the battle won. Death in vain forbids him rise. For Christ hath opened paradise. Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King. Where, O death, is now thy sting? Dying once he all doth save. Where thy victory, O grave? Alleluia. Christ the Lord is risen today is a hymn that we have sung this Easter Sunday morning. We have sung it with our voices, but more importantly, we need to live it out in our lives because this hymn, these words, penned by Charles Wesley so very, very long ago, proclaim the central truth of resurrection of Easter that Christ the Lord indeed is risen today. What does it mean for us to make that affirmation? Among other things, it must mean that you and I, in order to really sing this grand hymn, not only with our voices, but with our hearts, need to have Easter faith. Certainly Easter faith is you reaching the point in your life where you accept God's Son, the resurrected Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior. Certainly Easter faith is all of us making this affirmation that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord, but even beyond that, what does it mean for us this morning to have Easter faith? Let's use just a few scenes from the Bible to help us with our answer. What does it mean for us to have Easter faith? It means that you and I, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, need to stop trying to make the sepulcher secure. Do you remember the first sepulcher sealers? Check it out in the gospel narratives. They were the chief priests and the Pharisees. They had never liked Jesus, really. Jealous of his popularity, fearing that the admiration of the crowds would undermine their own religious authority. They were always trying, do you remember, to, to trick him? to make him look bad. And so they downplayed his miracles. They made light of his teachings. They really didn't like Jesus that much at all. But Jesus' popularity continued to gain. People were amazed to be in the presence of this man, God, man, simultaneously. They loved his miracles, they loved his teachings, they loved his sermons, but I think even more than that, they loved the fact that Jesus loved just being with them. 
the chief priests and Pharisees finally realizing that they could not out-debate him or outwit him devised a plot to do away with him. They even enticed one of his disciples with monetary gain, 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave in that day and age to betray him. And he was betrayed. And he was arrested. And he was condemned. And soldiers did torture him, the lashing of a beating known as scourging, making fun of him, draping a purple robe around his profusely bleeding shoulders, jamming a crown of thorns on his head, thrusting a reed resembling a scepter into his hand, and bowing down mockingly, laughingly, Hail, King of the Jews! They didn't like Jesus either. And having done that, they stripped him of that royal garb, put on his own clothing, and eventually, with Pilate's consent, led him away to be crucified. For a while he carried his own cross, he was so weakened by the scourging that someone else had to carry it the rest of the way. And then do you recall what, what happened at the place we know as Golgotha? On a day that we call Good Friday, but which was really an awful Friday, they put nails, drove nails through his hands and feet, attaching him to the cross, the instrument of his death. The crown of thorns was still jammed on his head. They gambled for his clothing played games with the only material possessions that he had, thrust a spear into his side, and watched him as he died. But it's interesting, this episode I want us to look at for just a moment, that after Jesus died on that awful Friday, which we dare to call good because of what it means to us, the chief priests and Pharisees who should have been joyous at that time because this one had been rid of, they were still skeptical, still a little bit worried. Something that Jesus had said this Nazarene about on the third day rising again. So they decided to take no chances and went back to see Pilate once again. Pilate, sir, they said, Please, if you would, give us a Roman guard so that we can guard the tomb of Jesus. If you would, sir, please seal the tomb so that no human being can get in and certainly the body of Jesus can't get out because we're afraid that his disciples might somehow try to come and, and get his body and then tell people that he really did rise again and that would be worse than the fabrication that we've already dealt with. And some scholars think that Pilate got irate at the chief priests and Pharisees. He'd already dealt with the matter. You, you've got your own guards, he said, and they did. If you want to seal the tomb, you do it. And they did. They became the first sepulcher sealers, posted guards, most trusted ones. Don't let anyone get through. Jesus was not only dead, he was sealed in the tomb. But you know, easy to criticize those chief priests, those Pharisees, but there are a few times when you and I become sepulcher sealers too. Oh, we, we want the tomb to be open, don't we, on, on Easter? And certainly we want Jesus to get out of the tomb when we're in a crisis and we need his help, and there are other occasions when we feel so close to him, we want to rejoice and tell the world that he's alive. But if you and I are not careful, there might be those occasions when we would, when we would just as well keep him in there just a little bit. There is this passage, this conversational dialogue in Lloyd Douglas's novel, The Rogue. 
And it takes place just after the death of Jesus. It takes place between a Roman soldier named Marcellus, who is not a Christian, and a man named Justice, who is a devoted follower of Christ. Listen in just to a little bit of this conversation from Lloyd Douglas's novel. Where do you think Jesus went? The still unbelieving Marcellus asked. I don't really know, my friend, Justice replied. I only know that he is alive. And that I'm always expecting to see him. Sometimes I feel aware of him as if he were close by. Justice, emotionally moved, continues, it keeps you honest, Marcellus. Because with him at your side, you are not all that tempted to cheat anyone or to lie to anyone or to hurt to anyone. When for all you know, Jesus is standing right there beside you. Marcella said, I'm, I'm afraid I would feel pretty uncomfortable being perpetually watched by some invisible presence to which justice the Christian responded, not if that presence helped you defend yourself against yourself, Marcellus. It's a great satisfaction to have someone standing by to keep you at your best. And justice knew something that all of us need to know. We who are followers of Jesus Christ never should keep the sepulcher sealed. Every now and then we do. But Jesus wants to be a part of every aspect of our lives. So in terms of your marriage, your relationships with your children, how things are going on your job, what takes place in your social activities. In terms of your life, both inside and outside of the church, are there ever times when you would just as soon Jesus not be there? But can you imagine what life would be like and how we would act and live if we acknowledge the fact that we can't seal a sepulcher? Jesus is alive and well, and he's right there with us. May we, this Easter Sunday morning, affirm that we have an Easter faith where Christ is risen and he is let loose in the world. May we never try to keep the sepulcher secure. There's another episode and, a, and another truth about Easter faith. Those who have Easter faith have to keep going in spite of obstacles. Do you remember the women who had waited on that Holy Saturday? It was the Sabbath, the day of preparation, but who got up early, early that first Easter morning because they wanted to finish the job that they were not able to finish to do before the Sabbath started. They wanted to properly anoint the corpse of Jesus. And so they brought all their spices. They brought all the ointments. And they were in such a hurry to get there to anoint the body of the one that they had loved so much that they almost forgot the obstacle, the stone. And finally, one of the women broke the silence. Who's going to roll away the stone? It takes a whole bunch of men to just push that in place. There's no way we can get in there and anoint the body of Jesus. But you will recall that when they reached the tomb, the stone had been rolled away. An angelic messenger from God told those bewildered women, you're seeking Jesus. He's not here. He left just a while ago to go to Galilee to get his people to do more ministry up there. So come and see the place where they laid him. And then quickly go to Galilee and tell everyone that God has risen him. God has raised him from the dead. Think for just a moment. If those women had stopped because of the obstacle of that stone. What if they had said, it's no use. We're not going to keep going. Somebody else will have to do that at another time they would have missed a resurrection appearance with the living Christ. 
They had Easter faith, which allowed them to keep on moving even in spite of obstacles. You got any obstacles in your life today? Anything that could possibly keep you from being the person that, that God wants you to be? Relationship problem? Disease? Grief, financial setbacks, all kinds of obstacles. In fact, not one of us probably this morning, this preacher included, have no obstacles. We have them from time to time, maybe even this day. But may the obstacles that we have in our life never, never, never keep us from moving forward and affirming that Jesus Christ is alive. It's been a very difficult week in the life of our church. Truth be told, it's been a pretty difficult year. We have had more deaths, more funerals, packed in such a concentrated period of time that just as we attempt to grieve and try to start that process of finding a new normal for one, it, it happens again. And we have lost church members. In many regards, people who have been faithful followers of Jesus Christ in this church for years and years and years, who love the church, gave themselves for it. This past Tuesday of Holy Week, We had the funeral of Don Ball right here in this sanctuary. And when you really know about Don's life, you know that there was so much that he did behind the scenes always to help other people. He and Myra were entrusted with resources which they shared and continued to share, especially with the disenfranchised and those who sometimes couldn't help themselves, who needed a second, a third, or a fourth chance in life. But did you know that over the past several months, even a year or so, that Don had this obstacle with his health. It wasn't always easy for him. And with the aid and love of Myra and his children and his physicians and his nurses, he kept going. Even just a few months before he passed, he managed with help to get in a wheelchair, have someone to drive him to an important committee meeting so that he could have input on helping people who really needed help. No one would have blamed him if he would have let that obstacle of his health and declining physical condition stop him, but he kept on, he kept on going. Yesterday on Holy Saturday, we had the funeral of I think the kindest person that I've ever met. Rachel King died on Palm Sunday last week. Buried on Holy Saturday yesterday. Spending this Easter in heaven with her husband Lawson and her daughter Lita and Don Ball and others who are there. In her kindness and in her willingness to help other people, sometimes folks didn't realize, especially in the last portion of her life, that there were all kinds of obstacles that Rachel had faced. Several years ago, her daughter died of cancer. I wish that no parent would ever have to bury their child. 
when her children sometimes had struggles, she, she was there for them. When, when Lawson needed someone to be there and to help him, she was there for him. And just a few weeks ago, she herself was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Somehow she managed to find the strength to get in a wheelchair and have some help and get to Lawson's funeral two weeks ago. She went to the graveside, back to her home and greeted people who came to say we care. But I tell you this about Rachel because of something she always did. Something that kept her going as it kept Don Ball going and faithful followers of Jesus Christ going, but this is what kept Rachel going even during some of the most difficult obstacles in the course of her life. You know what it was? It was Psalm 118.24. I am told by her children, particularly Lisa, her daughter, that, that her mom was always quoting Psalm 118.24. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It did not matter to Rachel if the day was going good, if the day was going bad, if it was kind of mediocre. This is the day that the Lord hath made, she would say, not only to herself, but to her family members as well. And then she would say, even when there are storms in your life, even in your storms, Find all the things you can and still praise for them. In your storms, whatever those storms might be, find all the things that you can still praise. And that act of praise in and of itself, she said, will be used by God to get you through the storm. And the storm might be the death of a daughter or the breakup of a relationship or the death of a husband or the decline in one's health or the diagnosis of cancer or a trip to a cemetery when you yourself are in a wheelchair. But she would still say, Psalm 118, 24, this is the day that the Lord hath made in your storms. Find all the things you can still praise. We've all got storms in our lives from time to time. Some might be brewing in our lives this very day. But be sure that you employ Easter faith. And don't allow the obstacles to keep you from moving in the direction that Christ has set out for you. Even venture to employ Psalm 118.24 because in your storms, whatever those storms might be, Find all the things that you can still praise, and God will use that praise to get you through the storm. Easter faith. Stop trying to seal the sepulchers. God wants to be part of your life. Easter faith. Keep on moving even when those obstacles appear to block the way. And finally, Easter faith. Affirming that the Christ who was resurrected back that first Easter long ago still comes back for you. William Willimon said that the real miracle of Easter is not so much that God raised Jesus from the dead to give us victory so that we could have reunion one day in heaven with our loved ones. He said that is part of Easter faith. But he said just as important is the fact that not only did God raise Jesus from the dead, but this resurrected Jesus came back to be with us, to show up for us. Not just back then, but right now, to show up for us. And then Willimon tells a, a story. William Willimon, who for years was the, the chaplain at Duke University, later became the bishop of all the Methodists in Alabama. So he would be the chief Methodist administrative minister of all the, all the Methodists in Alabama. And, and he said, so he went one Wednesday night and met with the members of a little rural church. They were mostly farmers and they gathered around. 
he gathered them together in the meeting and he said that he just gave them the devil really he said look you people ran off your last pastor you didn't treat him well at all in fact we're not going to send you another preacher there's not a Methodist preacher in Alabama that would want to come and help you all out. You're a terrible church. I mean, he really, boy, was he pastoral. I mean, he was letting them have it. And he finished ranting and raving. And when he had halfway calmed down a little bit, one old farmer came up to him and said, Well, Bishop, if what you have just said is true, then it's most amazing that the resurrected Christ still shows up here most every Sunday. Which was another way of saying that regardless of who you are and what you have done and mistakes that you have made, God didn't just raise Jesus from the dead God raised Jesus from the dead and sent him back to show up in your life. Because as Will Willimon said, God doesn't want to be in heaven without you. And so Jesus keeps showing up so that you can be with him. Christ the Lord is risen today. Whatever obstacles are in your life, however many times you've ended up sealing a sepulcher, even when you think you've messed up so much that not even Jesus would come by again, he will, he loves you. He's for you. And so when you go from this place today, I hope you go with Easter faith. I hope you'll go with the knowledge that God raised Jesus from the dead and that he sent his resurrected son to show up in your life and to love you. For Easter faith, for resurrection, thanks be to God.